that. Let's. <laughs> oh, oh, are we are, are we are we gonna do the best first? Um, sure. They had not? the highest pick in the AFC, so we'll start oh with my the God. New York Jets. Oh God, the New York Jets are uh, Jeremy's big winner for the NFL draft, and it's it's hard to argue. It's hard to argue with anything that the Jets did in the draft. They get Zach Wilson, number two overall, uh, Elijah Vera Tucker, Elijah Moore, Michael Carter, the running back out of North Carolina. They picked up about five different safeties in all of in in all in the. Excuse me, it just started thunderstorming yeah, here. It's, it's it got really loud. It's right in the tin roof. <laughs> Holy shit! It feels like there's a plane taking off in here. Um, anyway. Like I said, they picked up about five safeties in the draft as well, and no, they didn't. And they've and they've got an interesting an interesting take that Ro- Rob Salah is going to use all these guys for. Uh, Hamza Nazaldine and uh, Jamie Sherwood, mm-hmm. they're they're going to play them at linebacker, which is really interesting and kind of a, a it's a new take on how to play defense. And I, I've said this, I, what, God, I think I've said this all year long. Receivers in the NFL are getting smaller. Right. They're getting faster, and it's starting to matter less and less how good you are against the run because everything in the NFL is getting faster and smaller. So now you're taking two safeties at the big knock on them. The reason they went in day three was because they couldn't cover over the top. Cool. You don't have to now. You don't have to. So now you've got these two terminators that just lay pipe that are going to be playing outside linebacker for you. That's a. It's a very interesting draft. I never thought I could see a team do something that I had never seen before. That's something I had never seen before. And I was very confused on draft day because we took five defensive backs in a row. <laughs> uh, but now that I know two of them are linebackers, yeah, that grade went back to an A. All right, so your best pick of the draft for the New York Jets, Elijah Moore getting him in the second wow. round at 34 overall. So uh, when we were watching the pick come down, you were originally targeting Tevin Jenkins. I think it was. That's who I thought one. it was going to be. Yeah. And what then, that tells me is that they feel the way that they that they actually mean what they've said about George Fant. Mm-hmm. They think he can be a right tackle in this scheme. Uh, they think this line is good. Now that you've got Ali Vera Tucker and Mackay Beckton on the left side, George Fant and uh, Greg Van Roten on the right. And, and 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 I'm here for it. I will say, walking into this, Zach Wilson has better weapons and a better line than Sam Darnold ever did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, I thought the Elijah Moore pick was 100% the home run hit of the draft for the Jets. Getting a first-team All-American wide receiver in the second round is is kind of crazy to me. Um, we had him mocked as high as some, like, originally going, like, Tennessee. 22. At 22. Um, and the Jets just, he, they sat back and things fell out the way they did. We, we thought, you know, maybe, which was crazy, we were even thinking Jabril Cox maybe there. And he just kept falling and falling and falling and falling. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, Elijah Moore is going to be – now Now you have Corey Davis, you have Denzel Mims, you have Elijah Moore, you have – James Crowder. Crowder. He's, oh, he's actually, still going to be right. Yeah. I mean, you have weapons to surround where you don't need to necessarily – that was something of concern for me with the Jets move going into this draft was are they going to address that portion of it because I didn't feel like they went – I thought they were going to get two high-end um, receivers in the free agency. And they got Corey Davis, but they didn't really go after anybody else. They might have, but they just didn't pick them up. So I wanted them to address well, that that's situation. The, well, that's the thing that you've got to think about that, that I feel like people boo-boo kitty this a lot with NFL teams. It doesn't matter what we want them to do. Yeah. We're looking at this from a broad spectrum of, oh, you got to have receivers, you got to have this, that, and the other thing. Think about San Francisco. They have a lot of dudes that just do the same thing. It's a lot of Debo Samuel, a lot of Brandon Ayuk, and that's what the Jets are now. Now you've got Corey Davis, you got Elijah Moore, you got Denzel Mims, you got Jameson Crowder. Yeah. Then you got Chris Herndon playing tight end and Kenny Yaboa, a guy that they gave a payday to as an undrafted free agent. Mm-hmm. That's a high end, wide level tight end. I, there, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Now you've got weapons for days. The Michael Carter pick to me was the best value, one of the best value picks of the draft because he fits in the scheme better than any running back would have. Mm-hmm. I love everything the Jets did officially in Joe D. I trust. <laughs> Riskiest pick of the draft always when you're taking a quarterback at the top of the draft. Um, 
especially one that uh, you know you didn't didn't know a whole lot about a year ago becomes well, and that's a myth. That's not 100 percent true. The arm talent's always been there with Zach Wilson. There were injury concerns, mm -hmm. and they hadn't played at a high level. So I, Zach Wilson was not some unknown. That it, this wasn't like Joe Burrow, right. a guy that we didn't think was ever going to get drafted yeah. to the second pick of the draft. The, the Zach Wilson pick is the one thing I ding the Jets on. I, the, the A plus didn't come because Zach Wilson, because he is an unknown commodity. You don't know exactly what he is, and I'm not a hundred percent sure that he's better than Sam Darnold. But I right. can tell you this definitively: for the next five years, he's cheaper than Sam Darnold. And that's the thing that's going to be the most telling stat of that is that you know Sam Darnold could get in this new system in Carolina and be an All Pro. Mm -hmm. And then and there, I think he will. Yeah, and there's then there's going to be people out there that are going to start saying. Oh, the Jets probably should have kept Darnold, but that's right there what Jeremy just said. It's the money. The money that you're not having to pay Sam Darnold, you're going to be able to, especially, and here's the thing, guys. They, two in for round one, two in round two, two in round three next year. Oh, they've only got one in round three. Oh, okay. So, but I want you to think about what I'm going to say. Yeah. They're going to have stupid money again. Yeah. Cap space for next year, I don't remember exactly where they are, but it's a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have 12 picks next year. Yeah. As of right now, they have 12 picks. And I got a feeling. And, what do you, and, and that's what you do with a young quarterback. You build the team around him. Joe D obviously showed that that was well, – he learned he learned the mistake of his predecessor of not building around a, a, a quarterback like that. Yeah. So now you take the draft capital, you learn from the mistake, and you build with Zach Wilson. I would say no team has improved in the offseason more than the New York Jets. Wow. Uh, and that's it would be very hard to disagree with that statement. Uh, I think they're up there. They're definitely up there in what they have done in this offseason. I think the New York Jets have uh, have a lot, obviously, to look forward to with the new head coach, with the new quarterback, with uh, you know a rejuvenated offensive line. It's a lot, a lot to like for the New York Jets. All right.